Hi, welcome to February's Virtual Detour. I'm Liz Hafner, Director of Development and Communication with the Art Center of the Bluegrass here in beautiful downtown Danville. This is our newly opened Glass National Art Museum. Why don't we go inside and take a look? So here we are in our grand hall in the Federal Building. This building was actually created, I think around 1909. It was a post office for a long time, a Federal Building after that. And about 20 years ago, it turned into the Community Arts Center. We rebranded as the Art Center of the Bluegrass about six years ago and opened up this Glass National Art Museum earlier this fall in 2023. It now houses the permanent museum collection of Stephen Roth Powell. He's a world-renowned glass artist featured all over the US and Europe. He's in Russia as well. So we feel extremely honored and privileged to be the largest museum collection of his works. Steve tragically passed away in 2019 and with the help of his widow, Shelley, and a very generous anonymous donor through Center College, we were able to acquire this collection. We feature five prominent series of Powell's work, including The Screamers, The Wackos, his ceramics over here. Steve actually started at Center College as a ceramics major, and it, he only discovered glass blowing once he left Center and traveled up to Washington State and up to Maine and was a part of these really important workshops in the glass blowing community, and that's where he discovered his love of glass. He came back to Center in 1983 to join the faculty, and he founded the glass blowing studio at Center College in 1985. He was with Center up until his passing in 2019. We also have The Teasers. The Teasers was a series he started in the 90s that really elevated Powell to an international fame as a glass artist. So the last series that Steve was able to make is called the Zoomer series. This piece in particular was his last piece of art before his passing. The Zoomer series are really interesting because they're not blown glass. They are made in molds and done in multiple firings in the kiln. So it was really interesting to see how Steve was growing and transforming as an artist. We're particularly excited to bring glass, not only to the Art Center of the Bluegrass, Danville, Kentucky, the Bluegrass region in general, because glass is such a powerful art form. We hope that Steve's work here brings in not only those from our local community who may have never had the opportunity to visit a museum before, but those from all over to come to Central Kentucky, learn about not only our rich history here, but also our rich cultural and art scene. And we hope this can play a big part in that. In addition to a museum, we're also a sales gallery for Stephen Roth Powell. Anyone interested in inquiring more about how to own a piece of his is welcome to call the Art Center. Here in the hallway of the Federal Building, we're starting to show some of our more educational pieces related to the Glass Museum. We have some photos and pieces over here that showcase some of Steve's earlier works. Like many glass artists, Steve's career really catapulted from his participation in summer programs, specifically those in Haystack Mountain School of Arts and Crafts in Deer Isle, Maine, as well as the Pilchuck School in Washington. Those have been around since the 60s and the 70s and remain today as really important starting points for lots of glass artists. In 2018, Steve traveled to Murano, Italy, where they hosted the 47th Annual Glass Art Society Conference. And you can see Steve creating a beautiful piece titled The Artichoke with some of the glass maestros, Dino Rosen and Lino Tagliapietra. Both were mentors to Steve and he considered himself very lucky to be working alongside them. 
In the fall of 2023, current center students in the glass blowing program gifted us this beautiful piece in honor of Steve and the opening of the museum. The students wanted to find a way to not only honor Steve and the founding of the glass blowing studio at Center College, but also his legacy across the world of glass. They crafted this piece using some of the Marini that Steve used in a lot of his artwork. We are so pleased to be showcasing it here at the museum and using it as a way to continue on the legacy of Steve and that important relationship with Center College. Our upstairs rotating gallery currently features Powell's Echo series. They're beautiful vessels seated on top of tables that when the light shines down on the glass, it just pools over onto the table. It's a purposefully dark room. The Echoes themselves feature the art form called Marini or Marine. It's a glass making Italian term. It's long rods of glass that are cut at an angle and incorporated into the glass forms. Powell used them often in his works as a tribute to his love of Italy and Italian glassmaking. It evokes a lot of emotion. It's really not to be missed. It's quite a special exhibit. We're very proud of it. Here in the upstairs hallway, we also feature some educational materials about glass blowing and about Stephen Powell as an artist. Here we have our glass blowing timeline. It features not only Powell's career, but the glass movement in general. Our hope with opening the Glass Museum is that we're educating not only on the art itself and the artist, but also on the movement of glass blowing and how integral it is to the art world here in the United States, as well as globally. We include a lot about how it's founded in the 50s and 60s to what's going on today. It's going to be a great place for field trips and community groups to come and learn all about the beautiful world of glass blowing. And here we are down at our clay studio at the Art Center of the Bluegrass. You'll see behind me we offer a lot of classes and programs for teens and adults here in the Clay Studio. We have various artist groups that meet here as well to conduct some of their work. It is a very vibrant studio with a lot going on. We have a kiln behind us that is always on and very hot. We are extremely excited to continue to offer various programs for adults and children down here at the Clay Studio. Welcome to 409 West Main Street. This building was originally founded sometime in the turn of the century, I believe around 1908. It started with the Oddfellows Society, a place for them to gather and meet, and then has gone on to be used as an apartment building and most recently a restaurant and a radio station over here. Our associate director at the Arts Center, Laura Elwin, is going to tell you more about how we're currently using this space today. So behind us, you'll find our art studio. We welcome anyone to come in choose a project from one of our shelves and access their inner artist. In addition to the art studio, you will find Fern, our created gift gallery. We have Marini, our brand new cafe that just opened in December. All the way back, you'll find our new Kids Education Center. When you head upstairs to the second floor, you will also find a commercial kitchen, which will host culinary demonstrations later this year, along with two artist studios. And finally, on the third floor, you'll find a beautifully renovated ballroom that will host corporate events, weddings, receptions, and community events. 
There are so many beautiful original details to the third floor. We're very excited to bring some of those back to life in their original form, from the floors to some of the woodwork in the molding and on the ceiling. It's going to be a very special place for the community. I'm an artist and resident of the Community Art Center, of the Art Center of Bluegrass now is his name. One of three, I think. And I have just moved here in this new structure, this old structure that's been renovated, really. It's a historical building and they've underground all these renovations and I like it here, the light's wonderful. Actually a northern light, what the artist is supposed to have. So this is what I do every day. I work out kind of impulse and instinct based on what I have internalized over the years through practice. I went to art school a couple of years. I didn't stretch much painting back then. It was in the heyday of abstraction back in the 60s, so I didn't I really learn much. But I had to learn something, though, about color, a lot of drawing. I was in the Army three years. Went to college and that sort of thing. Worked at a regular job and I retired in 1993 to do this, which is what I always wanted to do. The painting has never finished, it's just ended. You have to measure as to when to stop, really, so you don't run it in too much detail. The old saying is less is more. Leave something for the viewer to look at, complete in the mind's eye. This seems to work. That's the oldest store west of the Alleghenies. It doesn't look like that now. That's from a photograph I took in 1972. I like these old stores because of the contrast against nature. And this, these old, uh, I don't know the style of architecture that is, but I like it. When you put a person in a painting, the audience creates their own story. It's a narrative, but if you don't have a person in there, it's a landscape. Welcome to the third floor of 409 West Main Street. This is a ballroom space that was once used as a ballroom and we are looking forward to bringing it back to life as a ballroom space for our community. We hope to host corporate events, weddings, receptions, community gatherings. It's a really beautiful space that has an original tin ceiling and we can't wait to bring the community up here to host many more celebrations for years to come. for hanging out with us today at the Art Center of the Bluegrass. We've loved having you. We hope you've learned a lot more about glass and our arts programming, our new cafe, our gift shop, and all the exciting things going on here in Danville. If you wanna learn more about the Art Center, visit us online at artcenterky.org or come to Danville. We're open Tuesdays through Saturdays, 10.30 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. And if you wanna learn more about these virtual detours, head over to bluegrasstrust.org.